Hey everyone, I'm Tamron Hall. The News Nation is following Newt Gingrich finally calling it quits. The former House Speaker will officially announce the end to his presidential campaign in about an hour. Newt won only two primaries, South Carolina and his home state of Georgia. He's been almost non-existent in the polls ever since and is more than four million dollars in debt. Newt Gingrich announced last week he was suspending his campaign. He also lost Secret Service detail Thursday night. Now many of Gingrich's comments during the campaign were controversial and some say incendiary. Joining me now is the News Nation political panel, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and MSNBC contributor Michael Smirkanish, as well as nationally syndicated radio talk show host Steve Dace, who also endorsed Newt Gingrich. I'll start off with, I won't make you eat crow. Michael, we won't do that to Steve because we actually like the guy. <laughs> so I'll give you a chance, Steve. Tell me now, how does it feel to have your fellow finally falling off the map here? Well, I think in, in the eyes of a lot of people, Newt's sort of been out of this race for at least a month, month and a half. I don't think he really ever got his mojo back after what happened in the Florida primary. Some estimates say that Romney and his super PAC spent 15 to $20 million essentially destroying Newt Gingrich in that state. And it's unfortunate because really there were only two Republicans throughout this entire process who can say they controlled their own destiny. One, of course, Mitt Romney, who's going to be the nominee, and the other was Newt Gingrich. Not once, but twice he was elevated to front-runner status, mm -hmm. and he just was not able to close the sale either time. So to your point, I mean, you can talk about how much money Romney spent to uh, blow him out of the water in some states, for example, specifically Iowa, I think you can fairly point to, Steve, but to your point about mm -hmm. controlling your own destiny, it was much of what Newt Gingrich said on the campaign trail, you know, wanting to, to focus on a lunar colony when people millions of people are still wondering if they're going to ever be able to get back into the work uh, the job market some of his comments about turning children into janitors at their own school so if he controlled his own destiny to your point then he's the person to blame as to why he never was able to get traction repeatedly here well, listen, I'm not one that comes on national television and, and acts like grown men get to play the victim card. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think the comments you actually mentioned didn't hurt him so much in the Republican primary. I think what hurt him is that not once, but twice, once in Iowa and then the second time in Florida, Newt Gingrich showed a lot of great bravado, which helped him in the South Carolina primary. It's what people were looking for in this process. But then in Iowa and in Florida, when the Romney people unleashed the hounds, Newt just dis didn't answer and respond but in Steve, kind. He, he was never so really he took Romney he wrote, on, and that's what hurt him more than anything else. There were checks that bounced. He wasn't on the ballots in certain states. I mean, there was a level of disorganization for a man who was once one of the most powerful people in Washington, D.C., that you would think, even as a supporter, you'd found inexcusable. I would agree that that is inexcusable, and I think that mostly is symptomatic of the fact that he didn't give, he didn't stay on the message that resonated with people that would help him win. Rick Santorum, for example, had all the same problems, okay. but those things ended up somewhat getting alleviated through the process because he had a message that resonated with people, and so those things through momentum sort of took care of their own until it, he just ran out of money at the end. Oh, so if Michael Newt had stayed on message, if he would have capitalized on South Carolina, some of the problems that you just mentioned, I believe, would not have happened. All right, Michael. Of course, now the, co the conversation is he's going to endorse um, Mitt Romney, but the words that Newt Gingrich uttered over the last few months are now in a campaign ad against Mitt Romney. Let me play just some of the things he said slamming Romney. Massachusetts was fourth from the bottom in job creation under Governor Romney. There's a huge difference between a Reagan conservative and somebody who comes out of the Massachusetts culture with an essentially moderate record. Can we drop a little bit of the pious baloney? Is he still the most anti-immigrant candidate? I think of the four of us, yes. Go ahead, Governor. That's that simply unexcusable. Are you calling Mitt Romney a liar? Yes. And Michael, if we want it, the hits could keep on coming. The bottom line is, how does Newt Gingrich walk all of that back? I know you guys like to say politics, strange bedfellows, and people get back on track with one another. But in this age of YouTube, and we love to play these things, it's out there. Well, I think it's one of the net effects of a very long Republican primary process, and, and probably you could interchange Newt Gingrich with any of the other candidates who were competing with, with Mitt Romney, but were ultimately unsuccessful. There's a ton, there's too much video out there for the Obama campaign to use all of it going into the fall. I would just add that I think there's truth in both what you and Steve have said, that the Romney spending did him in, and he was undisciplined, but I would add a third factor to the Newt file, which is there 
there was too much traffic among conservatives. There were too many choices on the far right. And in my view, that's what allowed Mitt Romney to escape with the nomination. Well, and we heard that, Steve, uh, conservatives trying to pressure at what point Newt Gingrich to get out of the race so that, uh, as Rick Santorum's camp liked to say, that they could go one-on-one -on -one with Mitt Romney. The bottom line, though, uh, that I I'm looking at here is that, um, Steve, you got a frail uh, presumptive nominee in Mitt Romney, a guy you and some other conservatives like yourself. Uh, Steve, you just still don't like him. And when you look at these uh, blows that Santorum landed, as well as Newt Gingrich, and the people who said they were the true conservatives in the race, how does your presumptive nominee survive from these things? Steve. Well, to me, I think you bought it, you break it, so you own it. I mean, this is what the Republican Party establishment wanted, so I think that's a question for them. I mean, you've got Karl Rove, who basically tried to engineer Romney's coronation for the last nine months. Now he's out there in conservative media saying he doesn't think Romney will win this fall, and yet this was really, Romney really is his poster child. So, I mean, this is really all on the Republican Party establishment. This is what they wanted. This is the campaign they wanted, so let's see what they can do with it. These guys, of course, they have such an excellent track record of victory. They have such an awesome track record of winning issues and defeating Democrats. Like many conservatives, I'm so confident that they know exactly what they're doing. Let's talk about the legacy, uh, Michael, of Newt Gingrich. I mean, here he's got, you know, he started out people wondering if he was just trying to sell books. And then it moved to, well, maybe he is uh, really ready to fight. You had some conservatives say uh, that he was the one guy in the race who could take the fight that the Tea Party people and some on the far right really wanted. Uh, brought to the president's table and now he goes out I can't say it enough with bounce checks it's his uh, campaign said that they closed the account so there was a mishap there and he's known now more for the zoo visits and being bitten by a penguin Michael look I, I don't want to jolly stomp on the guy on the day that he's getting out I, I think that his legacy mean dance on his brain I don't want to either but we're telling the facts and he never <laughs> Michael when given an opportunity uh, chose not to jolly stomp on someone else so too much is given much is expected and he sure gave out a lot to plenty of people all of those things are a part of his legacy. I think you're not finished in this business until you're really finished. Mm. So I, I'm not saying he's done forever, but he I says think he's he can never, He says at his age, it is very unlikely that he will run again. He, he just uh, touted his age and said it doesn't look like he's coming back in the game, at least to run for president. He might not, but I don't think he's going quietly into that night. You know, you know he is an ideas person, and, and those, those items that you mention are both those which people most admire and most are turned off by. They have an audience and a constituency, so I don't think he's going away. That's what I'm yeah. saying. And Steve, what do you think? I mean, you've, you endorsed him early and thought he had a fighting chance. I think, Michael, what he just said is exactly correct. I don't think he'll run again, but uh, we're dealing, frankly, with a Republican Party that is in the midst of a transition generally, generationally. And there's a lot of people from Newt's generation and Romney's generation that, frankly, just are not idea people. They're cliche people. They're poll-driven people. And I think the attraction for Newt, and it, sometimes it's his downfall, but he is a guy that actually thinks, you know, maybe conservatives ought to have uh, ideas and not just say no to things. Maybe we ought to come up with solutions to people's problems and, and not just be defined by what they're against. And I think that has been both the cause uh, for some of the greatest moments in Newt's legacy. Uh -huh. Keep in mind, there's only one person alive that's won a national campaign on conservative issues, and it's Newt Gingrich in 1994. But sometimes he outkicks his coverage as well. And quickly, Michael, you jolly stomper, you tell me what's going on with Rick Santorum. <laughs> he was on uh, CNN, and he would not endorse Mitt Romney at the time. We know that Newt Gingrich in a few weeks will be side by side and joint appearance with Mitt Romney. What's going on with Santorum? You know, I had. A conversation with someone whose opinion I respect in Pennsylvania recently who was trying to tell me what does it really matter does Santorum have a constituency that he can really d deliver I think it is a problem for Romney because Mitt Romney must tack somewhat toward the middle now that the general election okay. is coming and Santorum's going to be there to hold his feet to the fire and not allow him to do so that's what that issue is all about all right Michael Steve thank you both greatly appreciated again the big announcement from Newt Gingrich coming down at 3 p.m. Eastern time